Um, welcome to this PowerPoint about the classification of living things. You might already know a little bit about this, about how we put different living things into groups. You might have heard of different species of animal. You might have heard of things like mammals or reptiles, which are groups that we put mammals in. Have a little think about what you already know about the classification of living things before we start. Don't forget you can pause the video at any time if that seems right to you. How would you group living things? What matters when you think about what groups an animal would go into? What are you thinking about? How many legs? What colour it is? Is it big or small? What groups would you use? So, this is a technical history bit, I'll read it for you. In 344 BC, Aristotle developed the first system of classifying living things. Human beings at the top, and then animals, and then plants, and then things that weren't alive at all. He knew they all had things in common. However, he believed some living things were better than others. Now, Aristotle lived in ancient Greece. Uh, he had lots of ideas that are very important for the way that our world works today. But do you agree with this idea? Are some living things more important than others? Are your family more important than flies? What do you reckon? He sort of took that idea that some things are more important than others and he split it into these original ideas of how we could categorise animals. And he started by thinking about vertebrates and invertebrates. Vertebrate just means it's got a spine, it's got a backbone. Invertebrate means it doesn't. So picture you pick up a worm, it's all floppy, it's not got a spine. It's in a different category to say a cat or a dog which has got bones inside it. He's talking about if it has bones, particularly a spine or not. When he'd established that he was going to put animals without bones in a different category to animals with bones, he then started thinking about is it furry or not furry? If it's got feathers or not? If it's got dry skin or wet skin? And this is really how he came up with these original characteristics, these categories that we could put animals into. This might be a really good one to pause and have a look at, really get your head around. After some more thought, Aristotle concluded that some plants are better than others, so he split these into smaller groups too. Here, looking at plants that flower and have a flower, and plants that don't flower, ones that are reproduced by seeds, and ones that are reproduced by vegetative parts, such as other ways of reproducing. And underneath where my little picture of my face is, these non-flowering plants, um, they reproduce with bulbs by sort of splitting apart in the ground or with spores, things like that. Now, all of this was thousands of years ago, but with continual new discoveries in science, Aristotle's original classification system has been refined over the centuries. We're still using his ideas, you can see, that they're still putting all of these things that have got bones together and all of these things that don't have bones together. Still using his same ideas. A lot's changed, but it's still kind of based on those ideas that he had. Living things are now split into five kingdoms. Paul, oh, let's have a go at pronouncing this. Protocytia kingdom. Protocytia kingdom. These are single celled organisms with in nucleus, tiny, tiny little things that you might see in a microscope we're talking about really here. Monera kingdom, so these are things like bacteria, um, and they reproduce by splitting into two, like little aliens, like, and then you've got two, and then you've got two, and that's how they produce. The fungi kingdom, so this is your mushrooms and your toadstools, and these are weird, they do all sorts of weird and interesting things. Uh, and they have little spores and they reproduce by putting these little spores out into the world. The Animalia Kingdom. Can you guess what's in the Animalia Kingdom? Animals! And within the Animal Kingdom, things are divided into different groups as well. You can see here we've got some 
mammals and some reptiles, some birds and some fish and some amphibians. The plantae kingdom, can you guess what's in that one? It's the plants. Again, so many different kinds of plants that we divide those up into other detailed groups. Those plants use photosynthesis to make their own food, and I know you've been learning about that. And then there's a game. From this video, I can't actually let you play the game, but I'll upload the PowerPoint as well, or I'll upload the game separately, and you'll be able to play that animal ID game and have a go. Let me know how you do. So, quick quiz. Who came up with the idea for the classification of living things? What were the two main groups for animal classification? What was the first thing that he divided animals by? How are plants grouped? Can you name the five kingdoms? Tell you what, if you can name the five kingdoms, I'll be so impressed because I could only pronounce about half of them. <laughs> 